Friday, uh, we'll start talking about the genealogy, so you should read the uh, preface. You should get through that. Okay, so we left off talking about what I described as a big change in Nietzsche's attitude toward morality um, that occurred in Daybreak. Um, he continued to be um, critical of morality, continued to be a critic of morality, um, but in a di very different way from his previous criticism. So in his previous work, in Human All Too Human, um, he had been basically working against a background of a certain interpretation of Kantian ethics. Um, and on this interpretation, um, to be moral meant to act um, not on any empirical desires, but to act on the basis of the deeper non-empirical reasons. <clears throat> and this was interpreted to mean um, reasons or considerations or maybe motives um, that belong to a different world, a non-empirical, non-phenomenal world. So you remember, sometimes he does seem to talk this way. Sometimes he talks about at, like, uh, in the part three of the groundwork, he talks about sometimes having two perspectives on ourselves. But immediately after that, he talks about inhabiting, inhabiting two different worlds. Um, so if you think of morality as being otherworldly, as being not part of the empirical world, um, but part of a deeper intellectual world of things in themselves, and you think that there is no such other world if you're um, holding that the only world is the empirical, mundane, ordinary world of ordinary science, then you'll conclude that there's no such thing as morality because there is no such world, other world, that morality would have to inhabit. And that's his earlier view. That's the view of human all too human. Okay, but in Daybreak, um, he thinks that that involves, that picture involves a misunderstanding of morality. Um, so morality, he now thinks, does or can sometimes actually move people. Since there's no other world, world of deeper truths and things in themselves, that just means that morality has to be part of this world somehow. Morality has to be part of the ordinary, mundane, empirical world. Um, so morality now he thinks is real, but people misunderstand it. Um, um, and, and so now the criticism that he offers of it is not that it doesn't exist because it must be off someplace else that doesn't exist. Now it's here, it actually moves people, um, but there's a different problem with it, um, namely the value of it. Um, so some people, he now says, are in fact occasionally moved by the ideals of morality, maybe not too many, maybe not too often, and we should be especially suspicious of those people who claim to be moved by these ideals, but it is possible. Uh, that's not something that's false. The problem is that when we properly understand these ideals of morality, um, they're not good ideals. Um, they're not good values. So I want to Rejecting morality, but now on crucially different grounds. Um, so instead of doubting whether there are any moral actions, now the question is whether they're actually good, whether they're admirable. 
So this was this really important quote um, that I read last time. So uh, I guess I need to mention that usually the standard way of citing um, passages from Nietzsche is by the section number. So all these numbers that I give you here on the handbill uh, are section numbers rather than page numbers. Um, so here in Daybreak section 103 is called There Are Two Kinds of Deniers of Morality. Um, and basically the first kind of denier of morality is what he held under in human all to human, um, that there is no such thing as genuinely moral action. But then the other way of denying morality, the one that he now affirms, is this. He says, um, it can mean to deny that moral judgments are based on truth. Here, it's admitted that they really are mo moral judgments, moral values, really are motives of action, but that in this way it is errors which, as the basis of all moral judgment, impel men to their moral actions. Um, so, a mistaken assessment of the value of the ideals or values or moral judgments that lead people to act morally. But then I want to emphasize this. He continues, I also deny immorality. Not that countless people feel themselves to be immoral, but that there's any true reason so to feel. And then he says, it goes without saying that I do not deny, unless I'm a fool, that many actions called immoral ought to be avoided and resisted. He thinks that's obvious. Or that many called moral ought to be done and encouraged. He thinks that's obvious too. <clears throat> Some actions which morality approves of are in fact good. Some actions which morality disapproves of are in fact bad. But I think that one should be encouraged and the other avoided for other reasons than hitherto. In other words, the reasons why certain actions are good and other actions are bad have to are properly based on reasons other than the reasons given by the moral system of evaluations. So the problem with morality is not that it uniformly and always gets its evaluations wrong. <clears throat> the problem with morality is that it bases evaluations on mistaken sets of values. Uh, the basis for its evaluations are uh, incorrect. Um, so. Um, so it's important that here Nietzsche is not simply in favor of immorality. He's not simply advocating that we reverse the polarities of the moral basis of evaluation. Not all <coughs> actions that the moral system of values judge to be bad are good. He doesn't think that it's just backwards. Um, okay, and maybe most important of all, um, I want to emphasize that he's not embracing a kind of nihilism. Nietzsche here, obviously, obviously, is himself making judgment, moral, uh, sorry, making uh, evaluative judgments about morality. Um, he's saying that um, we can make proper value judgments, or at least it's not impossible to do so. Um, and he says that, um, what? He says there aren't, he says, true reasons for acting according to um, uh, system of values of morality. So let, let me say those passages again. <clears throat> he denies not that people feel themselves to be moral or, or 
moral, but that he's denying that there is any true reason so to feel. So the reasons that morality identifies are not true reasons. And then he says, of course, sometimes morality identifies good actions. <clears throat> it's not completely mistaken. But I think one should be encouraged and the other avoided for reasons, uh, for other reasons than hitherto. So there are such things as good reasons that Nietzsche is affirming. Um, and he's denying that the moral system of values gets those right. Um, so I want to say one more time, Nietzsche is not denying that there are values or reasons that we can rely on. He thinks it's important that we get them right and that the moral system of making evaluations gets them wrong. Um, okay. Is that clear? Questions about that? Okay. Um, well, so if Nietzsche is rejecting morality, he thinks that the moral system of making evaluations is mistaken in some way. Um, but he's embracing some other superior, or he's pointing to, some other superior way of making evaluations other than the moral way of doing this. This raises the question of what exactly the moral system of making evaluations is. He's, in, he's opposed to morality. He's not opposed to all values. In fact, he thinks the problem with morality is that it gets values wrong, in some sense. Um, so there's an obvious question here. What is the moral system of values that he's rejecting? Um, and this is a controversial question in the literature. Um, some people think that what he's opposing when he calls himself an immoralist is a very narrow set of values closely associated with Judeo-Christian practice. Okay, so on some views, it's very narrowly religious values, maybe very narrowly religious practice or religious orthodoxy, something like this. And as we'll see, it certainly does include that. Others think at the sort of opposite extreme that he really is rejecting all values. I've just argued that he's not doing that. Um, but between the extremes of a very, very narrow focus on Judeo-Christian ritual, religious values, and all values, people, in, people interpret uh, his rejection of morality as including many different um, uh, stages along that. In the end, what I think is that the book that we're reading, The Genealogy of Morality, is supposed to answer exactly this question. So the genealogy of morality is Nietzsche's attempt to describe and delineate the system of morality, the system of evaluations that is the moral system. Um, and he's obviously rejecting that system. He's critical of the system. Okay, so we'll get back to this. Um, but however we identify or define the moral system of evaluation, the one that he's rejecting, Nietzsche also thinks that the moral system of values is already collapsing. He thinks that he's critical. He's critical of it. He thinks that it's mistaken in some important ways. Um, but he thinks that uh, in advanced Western civilizations, this system is already uh, collapsed. This system was founded, he thinks, historically at least, on religion. 
broken free from that to a certain extent. Specifically,